So this is the data on which I am going to run the regression. Uh, I hope I you don't want me to show you how to run the regression, right? You know, go to data, go to data analysis, go to regression. It okay, right? Where are your y values? Your y values are here. These are your y values. Where are your x values? Your x values are here. I'm 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 uh, copying the labels by design. I'm say that yeah, it has labels. I will ask Excel to put the output, put the output somewhere, right? I, I don't want to do that. It's already run for you. Or I, I will show you later. Let me interpret this, right? So I have already run the regression for you. Uh, okay. Uh, in multiple linear regression, what does the R represent? In multiple linear regression, if you recall, R represents the value, R represents the correlation coefficient between the actual Y's, the actual Y's and the predicted Y's, the predicted Y's. Okay, it is that correlation coefficient. So 97.5% correlation, strong correlation because the data is hypothetical. In, in reality, you are not expected to see that kind of very high uh, multiple R. Right, uh, but still a very, very strong uh, uh, association. So my regression model is doing a good job of uh, predicting the values of Y, which are actually matching with uh, the observed values of Y. R squared of 95, good. Adjusted R squared of 93%, very good. Uh, there are 18 observations, right? Uh, there are 18 observations. So uh, degrees of freedom, uh, degrees of freedom uh, n minus 1, 17. Uh, why the regression degrees of freedom uh, 5? Regression degrees of freedom 5 because uh, there are 5 variables x2, x3, x5, x6, x7. Therefore, how many betas? Uh, you will have. Uh, uh, you will have uh, you will have uh, beta zero, beta one, beta two, beta three, beta four, beta five. So you are essentially predicting the values of six variables, six uh, parameters, uh, six parameters, and therefore six minus one five. Right, that's what that is. Uh, right, you know what uh, sum of squares uh, sum of squares means. What the what does mean of square means? What does f variable f uh, statistic means? Look at this. What is this? This is my p-value, my p-value. My p-value is uh, of the range of 10 to the power of negative 7. I want this p-value to be less than or equal to uh, 0 0.05, actually less than 0 0.05, 5%, uh, right, 95% uh, confidence interval, 95% uh, confidence level. So I want this to be less than 0 0.05, it is uh, of the order of 10 to the power of negative 7. So my overall regression is significant. My overall regression is significant. These are the values. Okay. These are the values. These are the values of my betas. Right. So this is, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, beta naught estimated using B naught. This is uh, beta one estimated using B one. This is uh, uh, beta uh, two estimated using uh, B two. So these are the values. These are the corresponding values. These are the corresponding values. Uh, how to look for uh, individual uh, uh, sanity, individual not sanity, individual validity, individual significance. Each of the beta is significant, right? Look at these p-values. Look at these p-values. Each of these individual p-values are less than 0 0.05, right? They are, each one of them. Each one of them is less than 0, 0 0.05. If you look at the confidence interval for each of the beta values, none of them have negatives. None of them have negatives, which means 0 is not part of the confidence interval. 0 is not part of the confidence interval. Therefore, you are going to reject the null hypothesis that these betas are 0. You are going to reject that null hypothesis. You could look at, uh, you could reject that null hypothesis by looking at the confidence interval and say that these, uh, the confidence interval does not contain 0 or you are going to reject the null hypothesis simply by looking at the p-value and say that uh, the p-value is less than 0 0.05 and therefore the null hypothesis that the beta, individual beta is 0 is rejected. Okay. So uh, uh, these are the individual uh, estimations of beta values. These are not beta values. We are we are not going to say that anyway. We are always going to say that these are the estimates of our beta values. So 1.33 is actually B0, which represents which estimates, uh, which is used to estimate beta naught, and so on. So uh, uh, vivo was uh, variable x2. Uh, Xiaomi was uh, variable x3. So, uh, this was uh, x4 was deleted. So this was x5. Uh, this was x6 and this was x7 because x8 was deleted, right? Uh, right. So uh, this is what it is. 
we don't have to dwell on uh, uh, interpreting the regression output further. Uh, the focus is now going to shift to interpreting these beta values, right? Convince yourself that you have understood the output uh, of regression. Anyway, uh, uh, we are going to later on share this Excel sheet with you and you can play with it and uh, understand the regression part of this. The focus is, as I said, not on the regression, trying to interpret these values. Okay. Let us go to PPT now. Let us summarize what we have just uh, said from the regression output. So, uh, what can we say about the regression output? Uh, uh, so, the regression equation, uh, regression equation is uh, 1.334 which was the intercept value plus 1.677 into Vivo plus 1.83 into Xiaomi plus 2.334 into uh, 6000 mAh battery plus 4.83 into 20 MP camera plus 2.16 into 13 MP camera. Just to make sure, let us quickly go here, right, uh, uh, probably difficulty in seeing this, so let us delete this. So 1.334 is the intercept, 1.166, 1.83, right, uh, make sure that I have copied this uh, correctly. So 1.33 intercept, 1.167 into Vivo, 1.83 into Xiaomi, 1.83 into Xiaomi, uh, 2.33 into 6000, 2.33 into 6000, uh, 4.83 into 4.83 into 20 MP camera, 2.16 into 13 MP camera. Right. So that's your regression equation. Right. Uh, as I said, uh, here betas have a special interpretation, which is what we are going to focus on now. However, just to get the regression uh, 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 output out of the way, uh, uh, we can we are going to say that yes, regression is significant. The p-value of the F test uh, was amazingly good. Individual betas are also significant, uh, individual explanatory variables are also significant because we looked at the individual p-values, we looked at the individual uh, confidence intervals and found that betas are not zero. Now let us focus on these regression coefficients, they are going to be called as part worths. Okay, so this interpreting this 1.166 and 4.83 and 2.16 and all this. Okay, let us do that. So what are, what are part worths? So part words are essentially level utilities, right? What is the utility for that level of attribute? Okay. What is the utility for Samsung? Because Samsung is one of the levels in brands. What is the utility for Vivo as a brand? What is the utility for Xiaomi as a brand? What is the utility for uh, 4500 mAh uh, battery capacity, right? And so on. And remember we said we had selected a base capacity. Uh, we have selected a base level. Since we have selected a base level, these utilities are going to be calculated only as a deviation from that base level, right? Only as a deviation from that base level. So the total part worth of the entire product is essentially calculated from all the attributes and all the levels, right? But this is the total part worth. Total part worth, you can think of that as the uh, as the uh, utility or as the as the rating that the consumer has given you. That is the total worth of the product, right? That is the rating that the product has received. So uh, that comes from combination of all the attributes and all the levels, but that rating doesn't tell me which component of that comes uh, from each level, from each uh, attribute, right? That doesn't uh, uh, get highlighted. What I get is a macro number, right? Which is a total worth of the product. Think of total worth of the product as ratings, right? But that doesn't give me the split up. Part words are essentially trying to do that. So uh, utility values for individual parts of the product which are which are which are at each level of each attribute those are essentially part words those are essentially part words uh, as i said uh, in regression uh, uh, we only get the relative part words not the absolute part words so uh, part worth for our data part worth for each of uh, each of our uh, attributes at each, at each level for the brand uh, Samsung was our base level Samsung was our base level so Samsung gets a utility of 0 or part worth of 0 Vivo gets a part worth of 1.167, Xiaomi gets a part worth of uh, 1.834, right, relative to Samsung. Similarly, uh, for the second attribute, which was the battery size, for the battery size, uh, 4500 mAh was our base level. So that gets a utility or that gets a part worth of 0. 6000 mAh gets a part worth of 2.334. Now, where is this 2.334 coming from? Go back. 
where is this 2.334 this is that 2.334 right similarly what is this 1.167 and 1.834 those are the interpretations of the betas right so betas are your part one so 1.167 is for vivo 1.83 is for xiaomi okay 1.834 is for uh, xiaomi and 1.167 is for uh, vivo uh, the last attribute uh, was the front camera resolution front camera resolution 8 mp was our base level 8 mp was our base level and uh, 13 mp gives an increment of 2.167 uh, from the base level 20 mp gives me a uh, uh, increment of 4.83 utility over the base level right so uh, that is how the uh, part works uh, or the total worth of the product is going to increase uh, so the total worth of the product uh, is going to increase uh, 4.83 units uh, if you move from 8 mp camera to 20 mp camera right uh, uh, the uh, the total worth of the product is going to move from uh, samsung to xiaomi uh, by 1.834 units to to total worth is going to move up by 1.834 units so that's the part worth of each level of each attribute okay now let us quickly understand uh, what were the two questions that we answered from the uh, optimization model for conjoint we remember there were two variables w1 w2 w1 for attribute 1 w2 for attribute 2 what was the weightage what was the importance given by the consumer for attribute 1 and what was the importance given by consumer 1 for attribute 2 right uh, when they gave when they gave us the choices here we don't have choices we have ratings so now we want to answer that question how much is the importance given by the consumer for each of these each of these attributes brand battery capacity camera resolution are the attributes when the consumer gave us the rating what was the importance given to each one of these attributes let us answer that question let us answer that question so let us use part worth data to answer that question okay so let us uh, now quantify the importance given by the consumer who gave us this ratings the importance given by the consumer for each of the attributes so for brand uh, let us look at the part worth range how do you calculate range range is the min value minus the max value min value is always zero max value here is 1.834 min value is always zero max value is 2.334 min value is zero max value is 4.834 right so let us calculate the range uh, the attribute brand has a range of 1.834, battery has a range of uh, 2.334, camera resolution has a range of 4.834. Let us add up the range data and we will get the total of ranges which is 9, almost 9, 9.0029. 9. Now let us calculate the importance in terms of percentage as 1.834 divided by 9. We will say that is the importance given by this consumer to the brand attribute 2.334 divided by 9 will give us the importance given by this consumer to the battery capacity and 4.834 divided by 9 will give us the importance given by this consumer to the camera as an attribute so clearly this consumer looked at the camera resolution the most because the importance attached was almost 53% uh, for battery it was the next uh, which was about 26 percent and brand was least important to this consumer because brand only had an importance of about 20 percent okay uh, so that is how you calculate the importance of each attribute given by this consumer okay importance of each attribute as given by this consumer so clearly this consumer was not brand conscious uh, brand only got a rate uh, importance of about 20 percent However, clearly this consumer was a, too, uh, uh, a selfie uh, fanatic, uh, therefore the front camera resolution mattered to this consumer the most and therefore uh, she attached a, a, a rating of uh, importance of about 53 percent or he attached a, a, a importance of about 53 percent to camera resolution as an attribute. Okay, so that is how you calculate the importance of each attribute. Now. Second question was, uh, second question that was answered by optimization was, what is the ideal product, right? What is the ideal product? 
Now, actually speaking, you don't have to look at the uh, ideal product uh, here. All you have to do is go to the Excel sheet, go to the Excel sheet and look at the, uh, look at uh, uh, the uh, combination which got the perfect rating. Look at this or look at this, look at this, right? Both of them got a perfect rating, 10 and 10. So you can say either a Vivo with a 6000 mAh battery and a 20 MP front camera resolution is the perfect product or Xiaomi with a 6000 uh, mAh, I, earlier I think I said it wrong, uh, Vivo with a uh, 6000 mAh battery and 20 MP camera or Xiaomi with a 6000 mAh battery and 20 MP camera. They are both the most preferred products. They are the most preferred products. So ideally we didn't have to calculate. Remember we calculated X1, X2 in the optimization. Here we got that value directly from the data itself, right? I don't have to calculate that. I don't have to calculate that, right? Uh, now few other things uh, here we had not, uh, uh, we had not uh, taken price as one of the attributes. Obviously uh, prices do matter. People are price sensitive. Uh, uh, how price sensitive they are could have been uh, ascertained, ascertained by having uh, uh, price as one of the attributes. Now one of the other advantage of having price as one of the attributes uh, was to be able to calculate uh, WTP, willingness to pay. How much are they willing to pay? How much does, how much does the price change if the level of other attribute changes, right? So we could have done that kind of analysis if we had prices as one of the uh, attributes. Uh, so WTP analysis unfortunately cannot be done uh, using this data because we did not have price as one of the attributes. So uh, that was something uh, that that is something that can be done using uh, regression uh, method, right? Uh, and uh, last thing to be looked at, last thing to be looked at is this within each attribute. Right within each attribute, we have actually ranked the levels. Right we, within each attribute, we have actually ranked the levels. So within the brand, right, Samsung is the base brand. Samsung is the least preferred brand, so to say. Vivo increases the utility uh, by 1.16 unit. Xiaomi actually increases the utility by 1.83 units. So for this consumer, the ratings went up for Xiaomi more than the ratings went up for Samsung. So uh, uh, for this consumer, for, for this attribute, for this attribute, within this attribute, Xiaomi was the most preferred level. Similarly for battery, 4500 was the base level. The utility or the part worth went up by 2.33 units. Therefore, uh, 6000 mAh uh, was the most preferred level of battery capacity. Similarly, 4.83 was the utility that uh, is obtained, the, uh, the, uh, the marginal utility that is obtained if you switch to a camera resolution of 20 MP from 8 MP. 8 MP gives you a uh, utility of 0, 20 MP gives you a uh, uh, utility of 4.83, so an increase of 4.83 units. So this is the most preferred level uh, for this attribute. Uh, so this kind of analysis is what is available using regression as a method to solve conjoint. Uh, and uh, we have also told you what is the importance given uh, by this consumer to each of these attributes. So uh, why did I finally, why did I not take uh, uh, price as one of the attributes and solve the problem? Well, I saw many examples where that was already done uh, and those are all available online. So I will definitely recommend you to take a look at one of those. Because as I said, uh, uh, conjoint analysis using a traditional multiple linear regression uh, is the most commonly used example. Uh, so we have plenty of examples available uh, on various online resources as well as various textbooks. So let us end the session here uh, and uh, uh, hopefully I have explained I have explained uh, uh, the regression application for conjoint analysis.